let's talk about albumin. Albumin is a really cool lab value. And we're going to talk about some things that I think will help you understand fluid volumes a little bit better, uh, fluid shifts a little bit better, and maybe some things about albumin that uh, you've been told that uh, maybe aren't quite as true as you think. So the normal range for albumin is 3.5 to 6.0 grams per deciliter. All right, I want you to commit that value to memory 3.5 to 6.0. Now, what is albumin? What's the pathophysiology of albumin? Well, first of all, albumin is produced in the liver. And I want you to keep that in mind because it's going to come into play here in just a minute. It is the main protein in plasma. So here's a blood vessel. Here's albumin. Albumin is the main protein in our blood plasma. It's also considered a transport protein. What is a transport protein? Well, a transport protein is a protein that other proteins and other things are able to bind onto and travel through the blood system on. So think about how important albumin is just for that, for transporting things through the body. Now it also plays a huge role in oncotic pressure. What is oncotic pressure? Let's actually go to this next slide here. What oncotic pressure refers to is inside our, our uh, vessels, we have all this albumin, right? And oncotic pressure refers to this pressure that these proteins uh, exert to pull fluids into the vessels. So if you got all this third spacing happening, or you got all this edema happening, albumin inside the vessels can actually pull fluids inside to try to balance out how those fluids are inside the, the blood vessels. If you remember from an uh, anatomy kind of osmotic pressure, you know where you have your solute, all this solute in your solvent here, and you got equal amounts of sol uh, sol uh, solutes over here in the solvent. What osmotic pressure is, is trying to balance this. That's kind of what's happening with this oncotic pressure. Oncotic pressure is this uh, pressure that these proteins inside here exert, pulling the fluids inside to try to balance that out. Now, it's a poor indicator of nutrition. Why is that? Well, the half-life of albumin is about 20 days, meaning it's kind of a long half-life. So a better indicator of nutrition would be pre-albumin because its half-life is like two to five days. So we're going to see this much more in like acute uh, nutritional issues versus albumin being much more uh, indicative of, of chronic issues. All right. So some special considerations. You're going to grab your albumin levels with the green top tube. And it's usually sent with other labs because we're going to be looking at our LFTs or liver function tests. Why are we going to be looking at that? Well, remember, albumin is produced by the liver. So here's our liver uh, and the LFTs are going to be sent with that generally as well as your nutrition panels as we're looking for like that pre-albumin. Remember, um, it's one lab that we can run with it at the same time. So some reasons you're going to see increased albumin levels would be something like dehydration, right? If we don't, if we're low on volume in our blood vessels, but we still have the same amount of albumin, what is our albumin level going to look like? Well, it's going to look spiked up. You might also see it with excess infusion of albumin. So if a patient uh, is being given albumin to try to pull uh, fluids in, we might see, you know, our 25% uh, albumin that they're giving or the 5% albumin. Because of that, we're going to see our albumin level spike also. Why would you see decreased albumin levels? Think about it. What's the main thing that would cause decreased albumin levels? It'd be liver disease. If our liver isn't producing albumin, we're obviously going to see a decrease in that level. You might also see it with fluid loss from things like a fistula or hemorrhage, burns, kidney disease, or congestive heart failure. With congestive heart failure, our pump is broken. With our pump broken, we're going to see all that increased volume uh, in our vessels, and that increased volume is going to dilute our albumin levels. So it's going to make our albumin levels look lo look lower. Long term, poor nutrition. Remember, we're going to see um, albumin decrease with chronic nutritional issues, and then we'd also see it decreased with inflammation. So some lab values I want to keep in mind here are, or some concepts I keep in mind here are lab values and then nutrition as well. So let's cover over the key points again really quick. Our normal levels are 3.5 to 6. Albumin plays a huge role in oncotic pressure by pulling fluids into the vessel. 
Prealbumin is an indicator of acute illness versus albumin being an indicator of chronic illness. Prealbumin is much better indicator of nutritional uh, deficiencies. High albumin is going to happen in situations like dehydration and excess albumin infusion. I really want you to focus on understanding and learning what's causing low albumin. That's what you're going to see uh, in your patients. That's what you're going to be tested on. That's what you need to know. The main driver of this is going to be liver issues, liver disease, fluid loss, CHF, and poor nutrition. All right, guys, please review all the different resources that come with this lesson. I hope that helps explain it a little more. What I would honestly suggest, guys, is you draw out a vessel, you draw out albumin, and you think through some of the scenarios, okay? If my liver's not working, what's going to happen to my albumin? If I have CHF, what's going to happen to my albumin? And really think through these different issues uh, that you're going to be seeing. All right, guys, with that said, I want you to go out, be your best selves today. Happy nursing.